In the last video, I built this road layout, which will be the foundation of the city's downtown hub. I'm really excited to start developing and detailing this area of the city and see how it will turn out in the end. But first, there's something we need to do. You see, I want high-rise offices to be a fundamental zone building type for this layout, just like any other downtown metropolis, right? The thing is, we don't have any office demand. And I think that's because we don't have proper education in the city to provide the certifications that students need to work at these offices. After all, the city only has a couple of elementary schools so far. So I thought in this video we could focus on creating a couple of detailed layouts dedicated to education. I start with the layout for the high school. I chose this location between downtown and midtown next to the highway because there was plenty of space to build here. The high school has this football and track field extendable asset which takes a lot of space and I definitely wanted to include it in my high school so this area will be perfect for it. The campus is complemented with a soccer field and a couple of tennis courts as well as a custom made park structured with a set of pathways that provide ample walking access. In fact, I extend the pathway over the railroads and connect it directly to the downtown area on the other side. Doesn't make a lot of difference now, but when the area is developed, citizens will be able to easily walk between midtown and downtown and contribute to less traffic. I complement the area with some small shops, zoned right next to the avenue, as well as some additional parking lots. For detailing, I add some trees to the front of the school to try and make the entrance more eye-catching. I also outline the entire area between the front of the high school and the road with bushes. I extended the custom-made park to the other side of the highway entrance with pathways that tunnel under the road and eventually connect to the midtown, which is already developed. Again, this will promote walkability in the city. By this point, I add a lot of residential demand, especially high density, so I decided to start the development of the downtown and give the city its first skyscraper, as well as some commercial buildings to complement it and an initial pathway network to connect everything together. This was all I could do here with the current residential and office demand, but I came back to this area later in the video and made some cool developments, so you might want to stick around for that. The high school is conveniently located right in the middle of both downtown and midtown, making it easy for students to travel here no matter where they live. I chose to build the school on a local road, rather than on the avenue itself. I believe this decision will assist with traffic management. This choice allows me to situate a bus stop directly in front of the school entrance without disrupting the traffic flow on the avenue whenever a bus needs to stop to pick up or drop off passengers. As it currently stands, the game is coded in a peculiar way. Students take very little time to graduate from high school compared to other educational facilities. Because of that, there is never a high number of eligible students, so I assume that this single high school will suffice to serve both midtown and downtown. However, if necessary, I can further expand it with an extension wing. The entire campus is encircled by a pathway network that connects it to both Midtown, crossing the highway entrance, and to Downtown, traversing the railroads. I have also arranged the infrastructure to link it to the other side of the highway, which remains undeveloped at this point. The road layout in front of the high school will serve as a transition area between Midtown and Downtown. 
It will not only accommodate residential structures, but also essential service buildings such as post offices, taxi depots, and eventually a public transport hub. Oh, but what's that in the back? Another campus? Seems like this one is a college, so let's see how it was built. The college was built in the opposite direction of the high school, in the area between the road layout and the rail system. The entrance of the college was connected to both existing avenues, but with a diagonal orientation. I also had to terraform and level the terrain a little bit so it doesn't look terrible. After placing the college building, I started by building a sports complex at its left side. It is composed of a football field, a soccer field, a community pool and a couple of basketball courts. I think this is pretty standard for a realistic college campus. I then built around the college and made some half circles. I think these will look cool to make the area more imposing. I then moved on to build an area dedicated to student housing on the right side of the college, but I first needed to adjust the terrain for the tram rail. Also, notice how close the tram is to the campus. This will make traveling to college very easy from anywhere in the city. For the housing, I used the 4 block long medium density residential, which is the same type of residential I used in Midtown. These buildings all look the same, so I think they're adequate for a housing complex for students. The student housing is complemented with a parking lot and some small shops, so students have everything they need to survive without leaving the campus. At least in theory. The central part of the campus, in front of the university, is going to be a big welcome park. I had some trees on the sides of the roads and also some dedicated bus lanes. I made the bus route go behind the commercial and residential with a dedicated bus road. I lost a bit of symmetry with this design, but I think it makes it look a bit more interesting. Now for the welcome park, I did this very cool design built with the curved road tool. I do love the road building tools of City Skylines 2 when compared to the previous game. It's certainly easier to make these interesting shapes. I then detailed the pathways with bushes and trees to make it pretty. I won't include the entire detailing process in the time lapse because it's mostly tree planting, which is a repetitive and time consuming process and perhaps even boring to watch but I'll make sure to include the important parts. The layout is extended for the library, which is placed behind the main building, and I then create this big semicircle in the back, which will be dedicated to luxury houses. All the roads are converted to pedestrian roads here, to make it a walkable and traffic-free area. The park encapsulates the entire college, so I continue building it on the sides of the building, using the same techniques that I used on the front and try to create some interesting patterns for people to walk in. I noticed that the grey area on the floor, at the side entrances of the library, extends towards the roads when you build next to them, so I'm assuming people can get into the building from here. So I built some access roads and also a pathway in the back connecting directly to the park. After the layout for the park was done, I could then do the housing. This could be housing for wealthier students, who can afford to not live in an apartment, but in a large house instead. The area is close to the railroad, so realistically, I'm not sure if it would have a high land value and if people would be willing to pay large amounts to live here, so I might turn this circular street into a commercial street instead. But anyway, for the time being, I use these bushes to give each house its own private outdoor area, creating parcels. These bushes were all end place for hall houses, which took a huge amount of time. Finally, I used the same thought process as the high school and surrounded everything with a pathway network in a man-made park for walkability purposes.
Overall, I like the design of the college campus. However, I'm a bit sad that these man-made big parks with pathways don't actually work as parks and contribute to increasing the leisure effect in the area. I also wish the game had a bigger variety of trees and bushes to make it more diverse, but I think that's something that will come with time. Anyhow, I try to create patterns by planting trees in some areas and leaving others empty to make the park more visually interesting. I also use this technique to try and distinguish the housing land from the college park in the back. Although public transport is not active yet, the area is very well covered with bus access and a tram rail, which will make the college very accessible. As I predicted at the beginning of the video, developing the education system of the city contributed to office demand, so we can finally start zoning those purple offices. For the downtown area, I want to mix different types of buildings. I aim to incorporate residential, office, commercial and mixed zoning, creating diversity. I think that will look really cool. I also want to avoid turning this area into a messy collection of buildings. Even though it's meant to be dense and populated, I want to add some open areas here and there in the form of plazas and small parks. Parking lots contribute to a certain openness, but of course they don't look as nice. Because this isn't a rectangular grid, there will be a lot of empty spaces between zoning. I'll gladly turn these into small open green areas for citizens to enjoy some fresh air. Pathways will help to accentuate the walking areas. I spent a lot of time outlining buildings and pathways with trees and bushes. When in doubt, just plant some trees, they make everything look better. So, I managed to develop and detail an entire section of the downtown. Overall, the final result was a nice surprise, as I really like how it turned out. Not all areas will be zoned like this, however, as I want to dedicate some areas for hospitals, police stations and also other services. In fact, I had to place a temporary medical clinic because ambulances were taking a long time to get here. I'm considering disabling parking on the sidewalks of roads where it makes sense, like the arterials and key access points. But overall, I like to see cars parked on roads as it gives me an idea of which areas require more dedicated parking spaces. If I were to disable parking everywhere, I could not tell this. Unfortunately, saplings take a long time to grow, so we'll have to wait to see how this area will look when trees are fully grown. But hey, that's another reason for you to come back for future videos, right? In the next one, I'll finally start developing the public transport, I promise.